Hello, TNT Motorsports fans. This is the Hoosier Dome in Indianapolis, Indiana, where normally under the bright lights, it's the best from the NFL with all their speed and power. Tonight, a different kind of speed and power as Power Tracks presents the Renegades TNT Monster Truck Challenge. Tracks presents the most powerful sport on earth, the Renegades TNT Monster Truck Challenge. Power Tracks is brought to you by the Heartbeat of America, today's Chevy truck. Hello, everybody. I'm Richard Leake. Along with Army Armstrong, we are in the Hoosier Dome, where a full house is about to enjoy the Renegades TNT Monster Truck Challenge. And Army, when we move indoors, that means a different track configuration. Well, we're going to have a straight track tonight. For the people, Richard, it's going to be a super long track. They're going to start like they do outdoors with an immediate uphill and then downhill, but they have a lot longer room before they hit the jump, the jump being 12 cars. Now, you got to keep in mind the finish line is at the end of the 11th car, but they got a dirty dozen, 12 of them, to jump over to keep chasing these renegade points, Richard. And, of course, competition. We do have Bigfoot and USA 1 here tonight, but the story we're going to follow is Awesome Kong and Steve Dane. He is going for an unprecedented fifth consecutive win. No one's done it before. I believe if anybody can do it, it's going to be this kid out of Texas. If there's any such thing as a roll in this sport, this kid's on it. Well, we're going to roll on and roll back here with all the action in just a moment on ESPN. The power tracks where we are in the Hoosier Dome enjoying some Hoosier hospitality. That is Steve Dane with a thumbs up. Steve, your fastest qualifier tonight in Awesome Kong. He will be getting a bye run. Then we've got Mike Witt, Stomper One against No Problem and John Moore. Jim Kramer, Bigfoot, picks on John Brain and Mad Dog. Dave Wysorge, Nightlife against Jim Miller, the Barbarian. Plan for Keeps with Jesse Berge against Bob Brain and Wild Hair. Then your national champion, Rod Litzow, USA One against David Morris, the Equal. Here goes Dane for his first run of the night. See, Dane, Richard, you might notice, carrying a flag on the back of the truck, it says, Sponsor Wanted. So, awesome call on a roll, looking for that sponsor for the 89 season. Well, you know, Army, it would be easy, I would think, to find a sponsor, considering what Steve has accomplished over the last month and a half. He has won four Renegades TNT Monster events in a row. This is taped earlier. Mike Witt and Stomper, he had some problems qualifying. Mike made a, a good start, but all of a sudden the engine went away, then immediately Mike noticed the alcohol was on fire in the vehicle. He comes out with a Halon fire extinguisher, knocks the fire down. Remember, an alcohol fire, you cannot see it. So the bad luck of Mike Witt and Stomper continues. We're going to have to wait and see. He is scheduled to face John Moore, no problem, in opening round competition. We'll have to wait and see if he can get the, the Stomper 1 machine repaired and back out there to race. Meanwhile, John Breen and Mad Dog is going to face an awesome task here, Army, as he is taking on Bigfoot and the legendary Jim Kramer. Kind of interesting, Richard. Both of these fellows out of the Show Me State of Missouri. Kramer runs out of Bob Chandler's operation of Hazelwood. Bream, he's out of Jeff City, Missouri. A small community has a history for national championships, even at the high school sports level. But right now, we're talking pro monster truck racing, side-by-side, -side, Chevrolet, Ford. Kramer trying to put the mad dog down. Look at the air. Kramer gets. What a shot. Kramer's working his way back, Richard. Jim Kramer returns to the Hoosier Dome. He's been here the past couple of years and flipped over. He is going to try to avoid that tonight with a fine win over John Bream. Here you see Jim Miller of the Barbarian Operation out of Illinois. He's going to be running next. Earlier, Army spent some time with him. I was doing um, a local county fair in Hoopston, Illinois, and I was doing a um, reverse backwards wheel stand. And I hit him going about 10 mile an hour backwards. When it landed, it just busted in two. Okay, now what have you done? The truck's back. It looks good. How did we re-engineer on this to get the truck back competitive? Well, I had to redesign my whole frame. My other frame was a stock Ford frame, and it was all modified up. And this one here is a completely um, box tubing frame. It's um, five times as strong as my other one, but um, it's the same weight. Now, everybody has their own ideas to how you steer the truck. A lot of trucks have the toggle switches where the left hand will actually, through toggle switches, steer the rear wheels. The right hand will use a steering wheel, normal, normally found on an automobile we drive on the street. 
You're kind of unique. You have a whole different idea about the steering. Could you explain that to us? Well, it, my um, steering's all integral. It's in the steering wheel. It's basically like the new cars that are coming out these days. Um, when the front end moves, the back end moves the same amount, and and you just have to move the steering wheel less to get your truck where you want to go. It's just a lot less fatigue on the driver. And we are back to live action now as it will be Jim Miller, the barbarian out of Illinois, taking on a kid that is really coming on strong late in the year, Dave Wysorek and Nightlife out of Grand Island, Nebraska. Wysorek working that left lane, the Chevrolet took up faction. Look at that, Richard, he's out, jumps. Keep an eye on this guy, and that's the reason why he's starting to win on this tour. Dave Wysorek started his charge in Montgomery, Alabama. He continues it here in the Hoosier Dome in Indianapolis. He will move on into the quarterfinals. Meanwhile, it's going to be the barbarian Jim Miller heading back to the pits. Here's my buddy, mountain man Jesse Berge out of Wyoming, Michigan, and he is taking on the other half of the Breen Brothers operation, Bob Breen. Wild here once again out of Jefferson City, Missouri, a real football power house. Yeah, these guys, like I say, they're from a winning history in this small community, and you're going to see why. Watch the Chevrolet Mid-Engine. Remember that, Richard. This is the research development truck of the Breen Brothers. This is what they're trying to learn, what to do for 89. I look for an all-mid-engine combination. So Bob Breen pulls in the win for the Breen Brother operations. And Wild here, Army's down trackside to talk to him about the victory. Bob Breen with the wild hair takes the Chevrolet and moves to the next round of elimination. Bob, what seems to be the problem up on the starting line? Uh, I think everybody's a little bit afraid of that hump. It's, you get some pretty good air if you give her too much gas to it. you got to wait until you get to the top and then hammer down. Well, a lot of the fellas look like that they're coming over the hump and then the back ends are hitting real hard, and that way they're not set up for the jump cars. Is that, is that the case out there? Yeah, I think that's got a lot to do with it. I was watching a few of the other rounds, and I tried to do a little bit different this time. I tried to wait till my rear end got up on the hump and then nail it, and I got a lot, a lot less bounce. That way I could hit the cars at a faster speed. Well, we have more than 31,000 motorsports fans in the Hoosier Dome. Back with more action on the Renegades TNT Monster Truck Challenge in a moment. Back in the Hoosier Dome, where first round activity continues, it's going to be your national champion, Rod Litzow in Everett Jasmer's USA 1 Chevrolet, taking on a guy that we've never seen on the circuit before, David Morris in the Equalizer. Uh, you see the name Gary Cook. That is David Morris. Gary Cook is the owner of this machine, Army. Yo, know, Gary Cook has a history in the pulling sport. I think he sees the future in his monster truck racing, so he's built a truck for it. He's hired his young kid to do the driving, and this kid picks on the baddest of them all. The first time out, draws USA 1. He's going to learn from that one. Let's out. We'll move to the next round. So that 1988 Chevrolet, sponsored by True Value Hardware, continues. Rod, a former motorcycle hill climber, he told me he gave up that sport because he got tired of breaking too many bones. He rolled this machine not long ago in Louisville, Kentucky. And we're going to go trackside. I'd uh, find out what he liked most about the win. Well, Rod, everybody else seems to be having a whole lot of problems out there with a lot of bounce. You looked awfully smooth on that run. Yeah, well, my first one, I came out a little different. Now I took a different plan to it, and I think this way is going to work a lot better. Come over the hill easy and then launch on hard. So if you had the lane choice, as we've talked to you about so many times this year, and you kind of play games with the other drivers on this lane choice, are you going to keep working this right lane tonight? Uh, yeah, I'll stick this to... Probably all night I'll stay with this lane. We'll let you get back to your crew. Good luck to you. Thank you. Well, Army, I just received word from track officials. Actually, it was a double victory for Rod Litzow because the equalizer machine was disqualified in that run, even though USA won beat him to the finish line. The reason for the disqualification, I think you could explain about how both tires have to be on the junk cars. There's two basic rules in the sport. First of all, what you're jumping, both front tires must hit that obstacle. But what you're going over, at least two tires must stay on it usually the left or the right side. He did hit with the front tires, but he bounced off the vehicles, not coming all the way across with at least two tires on it. So the two-tire rule caught him. The Chevrolet advances on. All right, and back to live action. Here comes the bad luck kid lately, Mike Witt out of Mount Washington. Stomper taking on John Moore, the veteran out of Lafayette, Tennessee, and no problem. Mike may be having a string of bad luck, but he's still known as one of the up-and-coming rising stars. He's definitely one of the best drivers in the Monster Truck Tour. They do a lot of experimenting with the drivetrain. He runs a dragster-style clutch here. You notice how the truck had a tendency to come on late. 
But look, John Moore puts him away. That's got to be a highlight of his year. No problem for it, Richard. Finally got to the stopper Chevrolet. So John Moore, the veteran of four years on this renegade circuit, moves to the quarterfinals, and so do we. Opening round, it's going to be Steve Dane and Awesome Kong taking on the Barbarian. This one's for you, he says. Go Texas. Steve Dane out of Killeen, Texas. He has won four events in a row, Army, trying to make it an unprecedented fifth in a row tonight. And he takes on the Barbarian, who returns as a fast loser. Richard, it's kind of interesting. In the first year of the National Tour, the Renegade Tour, these fellas are starting to develop so much of a crowd following and Awesome Kong, believe me, he's got to be right up there at the top. Everybody's starting to like this kid out of Texas. Not because he wins, that's involved in it, but uh -oh. he's just a good kid, but Army, right now... He's, he's dead at the line. Awesome Kong is out of it. The Barbarian is going to win. What bad luck for Steve Dane and Awesome Kong, Army. Richard, the automatic transmission that took him four straight wins gave away in the Hoosier Dome. So the winning streak of Steve the Great Dane has ended in Indianapolis. And Army, I understand he's not the only one with problems. You found something out on the USA One machine. Well, Richard, just a moment ago, we were talking to Ron Letzow. He said everything's going perfect with the USA One Chevrolet. Got in the truck, he went back to the starting line. We noticed the transfer case on the vehicle must be broken. Somebody needs to let him know things are not quite as good in the USA One camp as they think they are. Back to you. Well, we're ready to continue quarterfinal round competition. It's going to be no problem. The Ford Bronco of John Moore taking on Jim Kramer and Bigfoot. And Army, I understand that these two guys are working together to put new trucks together for 1989. Now, Jim Kramer is doing a lot of research and development. John Moore, as you said, he's kind of the old pro of the tour. He's kind of the low buck guy on the tour. He's teamed up with Bigfoot. They're going to try to put Fords in that winter circle next year. Well, of course, Kramer, when you think monster truck and Bigfoot, you think of Kramer, it looks like an easy win for him. Yeah, but John Moore, if you'll remember, Richard, the last couple of weeks has really started leaning on his equipment. I look for a Super 89 out of that young man out of Tennessee. John Moore, 44 years old. Jim Kramer, uh, 37. Two veterans on this Renegades TNT monster truck circuit. Watch for both of them to be back in later competition. Meanwhile, Dave Wysort, the kid out of Nebraska that's making a name for himself, taking on another veteran as Wild Hair and one half of the Breen Brothers operation comes back to the line. Bobby Breen will be working a left track. The engine located behind the driver. A unique part of that truck. It's an experimental truck. Meanwhile, Nightlife relying on horsepower working the right side of the track. Comes onto the circuit and puts Bream away, but what a ride. Nice win by Dave Wysort. Nightlife out of Nebraska puts away the Breen brother and we're going to come back with more electrifying spectacular monster truck racing as quarterfinal action continues in a moment on Power Tracks and ESPN. Have you ever seen those commercials where one battery Problems. Mike Witt, stopper one, Rod Litzow, USA one. Went with a stopper, had some fueling problems a little bit earlier. They'll be keeping it out and they're off and running. Litzow, no problem, he says, with the all league we found. Litzow goes out for the Look win, but stopper. Stopper is blown at Army. Completely lost an engine, about a $20,000 pop for Michael Buckwheat Witt and that stopper Chevrolet. Buckwheat? His nickname has called him that for years. Okay. Well, the bad luck continues for Mike Witt as he is out of the competition in Indianapolis. Meanwhile, Rod Litzow looked like he had no problems whatsoever with the USA One machine. And this could bring up an interesting final that's a possibility. USA One goes against Bigfoot. Let's go trackside with Army. Well, right now, it looks like you and Bigfoot are working your way to getting maybe into the final of this thing. Can you put him away tonight? Well, I'm going to do my best. We're running some faster times. We're getting better used to the track, and he's running that side, and I like my side. It's going to be a good race. Well, Army, we're going to take a look at a replay of that uh, run by Stomper yeah. 1, Mike, and Rod Litzow with USA 1. And I'll tell you what, when you want to talk mechanical problems, call Mr. Witt up on the telephone. I think everything has happened to him over the last few months. What it is, Mike Witt and Gail Medford with a Stomper Chevrolet, they're experimenting with a new transmission, if you will. It's a dragster style. You have to really RPM the engine, and the engine just went away. It took up too high on the RPM and let go. 
They've learned something, they're going to come back. I still believe in these guys in that Chevrolet truck. I think they're going to be in the thick of it for 89. And another guy that's going to be in thick of it for 89 is Jim Cramer. He's driven a monster truck longer than anybody, and he's got some new things coming for Bigfoot. Army spent time with him earlier. Jim, the sport when it started to today, can you sum it up for us real quick? Uh, well, it's really progressing uh, uh, more quickly, quickly than I even thought. It's had a very... Uh, slow beginning, of course. We used to just display the trucks and then just barely drive over the cars, and now it's to an all-out racing, and it's just, uh, we're just scratching the surface in the racing field. Uh, I think we're going to see a lot more refined, more powerful trucks, a lot faster speeds. This year, a Chevrolet took the win. I know you and Bob Tanner are not going to sit still for that. What do we have down the road for the Bigfoot trucks as far as engineering and development? Oh, we're doing a lot of engineering right now and, and some uh, development of certain components to make that truck truck happen in the future uh we've got three different designs we don't know which one yet would best suit us and uh that's going to take a little more r d because we're going uh we're going to take try to take a giant leap forward and uh and see what happens so the truck we bring out is going to be something really different well army i'll tell you what i cannot wait till our opening show of 1989 st paul minnesota to see the new bigfoot truck with jim kramer he's taking on the barbarian right now jim miller in the semifinals Miller comes out against Bigfoot, but look, Kramer, Richard, it looks like he actually flies this truck. He just has a soft touch about him, but he's going to the final. Jim Kramer moves to the championship round, a place he knows very well. Last year, he was in the championship round. The year before the championship round, but he did not fare so well the past two years as we see a replay of this race against the Barbarian. And look at how much air he gets between him and the junk cars. He not only gets a lot of air, he gets a lot of distance. Notice he does go high, but look how far out he goes. That's an indication of a tremendous amount of ground speed, Richard. Well, I was talking about Jim Kramer not faring too well in 1986 and 87 in the Hoosier Dome in the finals. Army, I know you were here both times. Kramer came out in the final. They knew they had the front wheel drive out. Now remember, front wheels on these trucks are so important because if you nose over, you can gas it and the front wheels will pull you out. Kramer, as the screen shows, he's to your left, going against a Texas toy. He came out real good. The truck started to bounce a little bit on him. The problem came when he tried to land. He gassed it right here. Look at the air. Now the front end nose is over, but he has no power to pull it out. The front end's gone. Kramer nails it over two years in a row. This year he's trying to turn that luck around, Richard. And Army, that has got to be in the back of his mind what's happened the past two years here, though. I, I agree with you. Earlier this afternoon, he wouldn't say anything, but he kind of had a little grin on his face. Well, who is going to face Bigfoot? One of these two guys. Either Rod Litzow in USA 1, your national champion, or a kid that's been running hot lately. Dave Weisork and Nightlife. Weisork comes into this run, has to be considered the underdog. The dream race will be USA 1 against Bigfoot. People that bought that ticket would love to see that, but why Sorek would like to be in there against Bigfoot? Not going to be the case. USA won and Bigfoot. The dream final is set up, Richard. But a good race by Dave Y. Sorek as he gave Rod Litzall all he could handle. USA won, though, makes it to the championship round, and we have got that dream match that you and all the fans wanted. Chevrolet goes up against Ford, will crown the king of monster truck racing when we come back on Power Tracks. Have you ever seen those commercials? This ESPN Network program is brought to you by new Michelob Dry. One taste and you'll drink it dry. Warm up with TNT Motorsports in the wintertime. On the weekend of January 6th through the 8th, Chevy Trucks brings the Redman TNT All-American Pulling Series to the Ocean Center, Daytona Beach, Florida. The Lee County Civic Center, Fort Myers, Florida. The Charleston Civic Center, Charleston, West Virginia. And the Central Plex in Baton Rouge, Louisiana. On the weekend of January 13th through the 15th, the truck and tractor pulling action can be found in the Roanoke Civic Center, Roanoke, Virginia. The Omni in Atlanta, Georgia, and Freeman Coliseum in San Antonio, Texas. 
The big trucks will race side by side this winter when the Renegade TNT Monster Truck Challenge visits the St. Paul Civic Center, St. Paul, Minnesota, January 6th through the 7th. And the Leon County Civic Center in Tallahassee, Florida, January 13th and 14th. TNT Motorsports is proud to bring the nation's best truck and tractor pulling and monster racing to your hometown. See you there. We are in Indianapolis, Indiana, the Hoosier Dome, where well over 31,000 are enjoying this Renegades TNT Monster Truck Nationals, and we are getting set up for the championship round, Chevrolet, USA 1, and Rod Italia national champion, don't forget, against Bigfoot and Jim Cramer. But right now it's time for the Renegades TNT Monster Truck Challenge Question of the Week. This week's question of the week comes from Billy Gavin out of Minneapolis, Minnesota. And Billy wants to know what type of safety equipment do the monster truck drivers wear while they compete? With us is Rod Litzow, the driver of the USA One machine, the 1988 Renegades TNT National Champion. And Rod, you can pretty well explain some of the safety paraphernalia you have. Well, we start out, we have a full crash helmet that we wear. And then we have a neck brace that keeps our heads from bobbing around. And then we have a full fire suit with a kidney belt from the bouncing and kidneys take. All right, so Billy, you can see no matter what motorsports event it might be, safety always comes first. And if you have a question of the week, send it to TNT Motorsports, 5515 Poplar Park Boulevard, Louisville, Kentucky, 40228. And if we use your question on a future ESPN broadcast, we'll send you an absolutely free TNT Motorsports racing hat. We are back to live action, and look at this, a change twist of fate. That is USA One owner Everett Jasmer. They've got damage on that machine. Here's Army. Richard, the problem seems to be the front drive shaft. It was bent on the previous run. Now, Everett Jasmer, the owner and designer of the vehicle, I don't know if they're going to get back in this thing. We're keeping an eye on the track officials to find out. Everything else looks good, but the front drive shaft is bent. We could tell a moment ago when they were moving, it was slopping around. Back up to you, Richard. All right, Army, let's find out if we can hear from Jasper himself if they plan on running the finals here. Yeah, So Army is just like it was all during 1988. USA won the Chevrolet against the Ford Bigfoot in the final for all the marbles in the Hoosier Dome. Only there's a new twist with the USA One machine. Well, there's two new twists. Number one, the USA One is only going to have two-wheel drive. I don't know how safe that is. Number two, Jim Cramer is going to be driving the Bigfoot truck. So the big guns in the Bigfoot trying to put that USA One Chevrolet away, Richard. And so your selection for the win? Bigfoot. And I'm going to agree with Army. Let's find out as we're ready for the finals in the Hoosier Dome. All right, Army, here we go. Ford, Bigfoot, Chevrolet, USA One. They're off and rolling. Hole shot by the Bigfoot truck. Kramer's going to take a win. And Rod lets out a smart drive. Who will drive only. He didn't care if any equipment. We will see that battle again in 1989. I'll guarantee you, Richard. All right, so Jim Kramer finishes 1988 on a winning note in the Hoosier Dome. Well, first of all, we're going to congratulate Jim Kramer on a super job of driving out there, Jim. Well, it got really squirrely, and I saw shades of last year and the year before, and I said, this can't happen to me again. What he's talking about on this weekend, for the last two years, he's been on his head. Next year, this is over. This is 1988. We wrap it up. We put a bow on it. But we're coming out in a little bit for 1989. Is Bigfoot going to be making any changes? We're still trying to pump you for some information here. You'll see a Bigfoot out here with the drastic changes, I tell you. It'd uh, be a lot lighter, a lot faster, a lot more motor, a lot more agile. And... Uh, it's going to be something to see. Okay, so actually we had three big stories tonight. Number one, Steve Dane and Awesome Kong, his winning streak ended at four in a row. He broke in the quarterfinals. Story number two, USA won, got to the finals, but he got there limping to the starting line. He broke his front wheel drive. He raced in the finals with only two wheel drive, and that brought the win to Bigfoot. So story number three is Jim Cramer and Bigfoot starting their big comeback for 1989. For Army Armstrong, I'm Richard Lake. We'll see you again on the tracks across America. Join us next time for Power Tracks.